Hello and welcome, it has been a while. Aurora version 2.2 has just released and with that I'm starting a new series here as the United Earth States in Aurora, a very bug standard uh, race of humans who will be exploring the galaxy and bringing human civilization to the stars. In this series I'll be trying out some new editing, there'll be a lot more cuts and only focusing on the action or things that pop up. Um, and so I'll be recording quite a bit more than will actually be seen on behind the scenes. If you would like to see more of the content that is the uncut stuff, uh, you can um, become a member and I will be releasing that to members uh, to see the raw uncuts, watch me do all the little ship design things, all the little tinier stuff. Um, but suffice to say, let us begin. So, as the United Earth States, we are starting with a plethora of ships. We are starting in the trans Newtonian start, and all of the options will be seen on screen um, that you can see that we've picked. We're going for a 25, 25, 25, um, and the database, as well as all of those options, I will put down in the description below, and you can download and get access to those, no problem at all. So we're starting here as the United Earth States in the trans Newtonian start. And with that trans Newtonian start, we are going to be um, starting with a lot of different ships. To begin with, we have the Colonial Defense Corps. Colonial Defense Corps has access to various frigates for patrol purposes and escort. And the Colonial Establishment Corps is part of that. They transport colonists and supplies. And we also have a ton of other ships um, for different purposes, as you can see here. So let's begin, shall we? So, we're looking at getting our research rate up to 240 RP. Uh, we're going for four different techs. There are some limitations that I put on myself in this campaign. Again, they'll be in the description below along with all the other options and the database. We're going for better missile technology because our ships use missiles. We're going for minimum engine power because I want to have more efficient ships in general. And we're also going for active craft and strength and research rate. And that's generally our research as it stands. So, this is the production that I've gone with initially for our construction. I've gone for 10,000 infrastructure, 200 construction factories, 200 mines, a naval shipyard, cargo short station, refueling stations, deep space tracking stations. So, these three things are for colonies. These will be for future colonies. All in these factories because we're going to need a lot more missiles. Um, naval shipyard because I want to build some lighter crafts. And our construction factories and mines are also what I'm going to be wanting to do. Infrastructure as well, very important for colonies, so that'll be something that we'll be looking at. Now, in terms of our shipyards, we have a ton of different um, ships that we can build, and so we're going to look at, see what we can do there. <laughs> now, we have a lot of ships already available, so I'm not really concerned about building new military vessels, at least for now. What I am going to order up is the survey cruisers that we have available, and you'll see more of those as we go into the episode. I'm going to order up two of the ships to be built, the Lysimaka and the Ozeros, and those will be constructed within two years. We're starting in 2045 because it's 20 years past the initial start date because 2025 is going to be soon IRL, so it seems a bit weird to start in 2025. I'm then going to build a two more fuel harvesters, I think, because we're going to need quite a bit of fuel. Um, and then outside of that, I don't really care about any of this. Now, in terms of our ground forces, um, I haven't discussed this yet, but we have three colonial corps. These are not proper you know, military forces, so to speak. These are more colonial defense. Um, our proper military is not yet deployed for space combat, um, and so these are for territorial protection and also guarding ships and, and other things like that. Each colonial corps has a colonial regiment, and each regiment is part of a division, um, which becomes part of that colonial core, with four divisions being twenty uh, being part of the core, with each division being twenty five thousand tons. The we also have colonial analysis battalions, which offer senior archaeology, uh, combat engineer or colonial engineer battalions, and replacements here for when we need to replace forces. Furthermore, um, we also have we are we're going to be designing some more things, but we've got about three hundred thousand tons of forces. You can you can about say that. 
Organizations are new and very, very cool. And this allows us to build entire divisions at a time. And now the industry is used to build forces. Its ground forces are so much nicer. So I am actually going to order up a colonial defense corps. So I'm going to go ahead and say construct corps. And what that will do is if we go to ground unit training, it will build everything needed for that and then assign that into a hierarchy. Um, and that will take relatively little time because it will be going through each of those and building them as needed. So let's turn events on. Go five seconds into the future, please. Thank you. Make sure I save and uh, let's head off into the future. So we've begun exploring outside the asteroid belt as our survey vessels have taken to the start. Those survey vessels being, if we check the survey core, the Volcaria, the Yiki, the Stratos and the Vugla Uh Those are the four vessels uh, currently doing their work out in the stars and hopefully they will bring us home some good news. So, we have found resources on Venus. A uh, decent amount, nothing too major. We'll have to see what else we can find. Mars has resources, beautiful. A lot of resources, actually. 226,000 tons of corundium and iridium and boronide. That is going to be great. And there is an excellent survey possibility there. Now, we don't have geological survey capacity just yet. But Mars could be a big mining resource sink for us. So that's going to be a major colony that we're going to be looking into. We will begin our colonization relatively soon, but we are now going to reprioritize. I'm going to cancel sensitive fire control research and begin work into getting ourselves geosurvey equipment. These techs have been reduced in price, by the way. Um, Steve has reduced those in price, which is nice to see, actually, um, because ground force techs were very expensive. So the first thing that we're going to immediately do is look at the colonies we want to assign. Now, if we have a look here, we have Mars, 100% colony on Mars. Luna, probably not. We will put a colony there for now, but it's not going to be a focus. Oh, we actually found a destroyed outpost on Mercury. Okay, that's getting a colony immediately. And Venus will not get a colony at least for now. Vesta, however, uh, Vesta's getting a colony. It's a decent amount of galacite. It's actually got more galacite than Earth has, so definitely. Um, and we're going to start moving over infrastructure once we have enough and we know which colonies to go for. So one of the benefits that I did with our colonial forces, our, our transport, is that they can carry both people and cargo. Um, they can carry 60,000 per division, 60,000 uh, tons of cargo and then 200,000 people at a time which allows us to move just the right amount of people and just the right amount of infrastructure so what we are actually going to do because we did find that extra outpost is i'm going to get our troop transports to immediately start moving our analysis battalions over to the to mercury so with those on the move they'll be going over to mercury um, and I'll take a few days for them and they will have unloaded and the first forces have arrived on another celestial body to find out what we have on Mercury. Okay, so the outer system has begun survey and we have found Saurium on Saturn. No Saurium has been detected on Jupiter. However, some of its moons have resources. Io, 2.7 million uranium. Uh as well as Neutronium at 0.1.1 million and Corundium at 8.9 million. Brenderite, 3.2 million on Ganymede. All good amounts of resources, which we will be considering. Um, I will be sending over our fuel harvesters immediately to begin extracting fuel from, um, from Saturn, um, as that's going to be a priority. So the first fuel harvesters are on the way to Saturn. They're going to be about six days out to get to the uh, the the rings of Saturn there. And we're continuing a outer survey of the solar system. In the meantime, really, really cool. We can see here that this colonial core is building out exactly as needed. I don't have to do anything, no assignment. We're just going to have that colonial core done and ready to go, which is brilliant. 
So I've started production of new missiles as well. Of course, that will eat into Galasite reserves, but anything is that's important. Um, we need to have a stockpile of missiles, which we don't currently have. Um, and I've also made some new colonies. So I've set up a co I'm gonna set up colonies on Pluto, this comet, Stephen O'Matter, uh, Io, and Eris. The reason for this is they have decent resources. Pluto actually has quite a bit of Galasite. And so we'll be sending that over um, as best we can. We are going to build some mass drivers once we have some of this stuff done. And we are building at a head, uh, pretty, pretty quick speeds. We're actually going to start moving the first colonists and the first infrastructure over to Mars and begin the colonization of the world. Mars now has a population of 0.2 million people. The first colony in hopefully a long line of colonies for the human race. As part of this successful deployment, we are going to begin by moving over the colonial uh, divisions, colonial core, um, to Mars. We're going to take the third and fourth colonial defense division and deploy them to Mars for protection purposes. Our survey vessels have completed a most of the survey of the outer solar system. Neptune has no fuel and Saturn is poor in terms of amount of fuel actually accessible. We can see that we are harvesting currently 2 million liters from Saturn. However, um, this is not that much. Uh, we do need to increase con uh, in, uh, construction as much as possible of fuel harvesters and also begin to look uh, elsewhere as much as we can. This is that a population now of 1.6 million people and we will be aiming to get this mining going on but I do want to get that geological survey situation sorted out first. We are at 1,900 for that. There is also bio biological modification now, and I'm very interested in looking into that. So we will be uh, we'll be looking into that somewhat soon. Maybe not immediately, but definitely a consideration. So Mars is our primary target for colonization because we are going to need low gravity infrastructure to colonize the other planets. So that will, of course, be a bit slower in general, but we are going to um, try and manage that if we can. Uh, I also want to start moving over some automated mines to some of these um, areas, somewhere like Stephen O'Matter, for example, with lots of galasite. We want to get that galasite moved in as quickly as we can, uh, but we are going to need mass drivers for that, and we're going to wait a little bit before we start to move those automated mines around. Hey, finally, we finished research of minimum power engine mod. We are actually going to send research now into... Let's get the next one, because that will be useful for commercial vessels, for next generation commercial. And we are nearly done with the first two new vessels as well. The first civilian mining... Oh, that's an unfortunate name. <laughs> that's a really unfortunate name. The first mining corporation has established itself. Uh, where would that be? Well, it's on a galaxite mining world. We will purchase those minerals and we will have that transported back to Earth. Thank you very much. And the first two new server vessels, the Lysimaka and the Ozeros, are constructed. And we will be assigning those up as well. And we have discovered the first jump point. We are going to order... The Azeros, under command of Chiquita Mosen, to begin exploration of the first trans-solar jump point. And here we go, the Azeros, one day out, good luck. We've discovered the system of Sirius. It appears to be a binary star system. Let's we'll see what we have to work with. We have two near habitable worlds. Um, we have a mountain terrestrial world, which orbits approximately 712 million kilometers away. It has three moons, including a larger moon, which is about half the size of our moon, Earth's moon. There's a gas giant here. And Sirius B has another world with a terrestrial, but a very high colony cost, so unlikely to be colonized. And it's got a good max population. It's not tidally locked but no atmosphere. So, not the best place in the world to live. However, and there's no water either, it is a mountain world, and it's in a system with a gas giant which hopefully has some sorium accessed to it. So, definitely a decent find, the first one. 
Um, what I am going to do is I want to know the distances involved here. So if we can see, we can see the distance about 3.2 million uh, billion kilometers um, away from the first star to the second star, and pretty nice. Now asteroids-wise, no asteroids. Okay, this is a fairly easy system then. I quite like that. So we'll have the Azeros continue its survey efforts there. So we have surveyed the first planet. It has Saurium on it. The moons have access to quite a few minerals, actually. Moon 9 of Sirius A1, which is a relatively bigger than the Earth's moon, has 6.6 .6 million tons of galasite. Very, very, very nice indeed. So that look is shaping up to, to be, be pretty decent there. We only have one jump point out of this uh, out of this system. Well, unless that over there, unless that survey location gives us something, it does appear to be that way. Now, that is very good in some regards, as it provides us with good defense and a good choke point. Not so good in terms of close by exploration efforts. Um, definitely not what you want to see. And uh, yeah, that was correct. So we're going to send all of the exploration vessels into Sirius. Now, in the year 2050, we should have all of our ships begin, all of our exploration ships begin to return home for overhaul and refit. So we're going to send you into Sirius as well. Now, in terms of other resources, we found a few other moons, but looks like nothing too big. There is some Saurium on the first world. There's some comets with a lot of resources on them. Actually, with Ridiculous amounts of resources. Okay, that's a priority. Those need to be targeted immediately for automated mine movement. We're going to create colonies here. And then we'll use this planet here for kind of stop off drop points for resource collections. And also for local system defense. Um, and so that will be on the second world. Um, they'll be able to do that. We may also want to put jump points... Uh, not jump points, but uh, lag range points between the two um, so that we can move easily. We found a jump point in Sirius there. We might want to put a defense station there depending on where the jump points are. There's another jump point. We're going to order the Volcaria under command of Derek Conkel to head to Sirius and enter jump point two. That'll take 24 days, and hopefully he'll be able to uncover some new systems. A colony on Vesta could give us a asteroid belt defense station and mining operation there. I like that, actually. Um, let's do that. We discover a system of 75 Apuchi. Uh, which is directly next to Sirius. It appears to be a trinary star system. Uh, yes, a trinary star system. Um, there are three trinary stars. One of them has a habitable world. Ooh. What's the colony cost there? A little bit of temperature differential. What does the temperature change to? Minimum, maximum. What's the eccentricity on that orbit? Okay, that's very, very promising. So we've got a trinary star system. We have Gas Giant on the first star, with a terrestrial world as well. We On the second star, we have our beautifully, nearly fully colonial capabilities. Just a little bit hot of a world. It's a savannah world, so think um, African climate um, like that. It's also quite low pressure. What is the eccentricity on that? Aperhelium, perihelium, very low. So it's going to have, relatively speaking, not too much of an issue. Now, it's quite a big world. And it's tightly locked, which means that people can only live on certain sections of the planet um, for the day-night and the tides. But, pretty good. Now we have another world here, which does have a nitrogen-oxygen atmosphere, but the temperature is minus 131. It's orbiting at 59 million kilometers. That's because this star is not that powerful, um, but very interesting indeed. And the third star does nothing else. So, Apuchi... Uh, Apurichi B2, Savannah World, is here. We're going to create a colony there. And if you guys have any naming suggestions, do let me know. Um, so the max colony cost 
on this is 0 0.09. If we can bring the temperature down, just a tiny bit, I mean, already just moving infrastructure over and establishing a colony there, that is no problem at all. So we are going to, that's this is a priority, especially if there's resources there. I'm then going to subsequently order for our jump gate construction assets to begin constructing um, the necessary things. So we need to construct the jump gate to uh, Sirius. So begin that construction. Um, and that will then allow us to gain access. So it's going to be a while before we can get in there. Um, but we need to stabilize. Now Sirius is actually quite a far away. The jump point there is quite a far way away from where we need to. Okay, we found aliens. Already. Okay, that is uh, surprising. Um, I need information. Those are hostile aliens. Those are indeed hostile aliens. Okay, that is not good. There is a ground signature there. What is distance from target? Distance is 2 million kilometers. Uh, Vulcaria, I want you to pull back immediately. Uh, Vulcaria, pull back immediately. We're going to head you to Sirius now. We are blocking this off. I'm surprised we were able to detect that. What was our sensor strength in this? Okay, 4.8 million kilometers. So we were able to detect that now. If there's only those ground forces there, that's not too much of an issue. Um, we are going to send... We're going to hold it there for now. We're going to leave the system. There are aliens here. Actually, no. Do not leave the system. We need information. Derek Conker, what kind of captain are you? Because this is how I'm going to decide this. <laughs> Depending on what the uh, captain... So you would be Commander Derek uncle organized on caring poor judge of character mathematician okay i think he wouldn't i think he'd do it based on those character traits we're going to move closer and we're going to determine so this is on 75 of Bucci b2 so this is on a very habitable world we need to secure this colony We are going to see what happens when we move closer. Now, the um, these ships have no weapons on them. There's a very good chance we get destroyed here. They might have surface orbit weapon systems. Okay, we just took weapon energy impact, damage to gravitational survey sensors. They are hostile indeed. Pull it back. So I knew they would probably be hostile, but I kind of wanted to RP that. So Derek Congo immediately get the hell out of there, begin the overhaul, get back to Earth. STO ground force signatures 1,300, sectional ground forces 2,500. Okay, they need to be dealt with immediately. They'll have to be bombed from orbit. We're going to dispatch Destroyer Squadron 1 to Sirius Jump Point. We will detach the Cicada for Jump Point assistance. And I'm also going to dispatch ground forces to deploy there we have determined that there are hostile alien forces controlling this area and controlling a world that could be completely habitable to human life they seem to fire without incident and we are authorizing ourselves to engage the enemy um, to ensure that they do not survive at the very least we need to lock them down how many crew members died how many poor men died for that Nine casualties reported on the UES of Lucaria. Total of nine people. We took damage and we will bring those guys home. The armor situation is pretty critical, but they managed to survive, which is pretty lucky, to be honest. They've entered 75 Apuji. We are going to make sure access are on. They are on. Now, weapon capability-wise, we have access to missile launchers as well as PD defense clusters, which are turreted PDs as well as normal missiles as well. Lots and lots and lots of launchers. We to have to use missiles to engage, hopefully without, because we don't want to cause too many losses. So we're going to move to the target and be about a million kilometers away. Okay, we are now in range and we have detection on enemy targets. 
We will hold a position. I want missiles spooled up and ready to go. Okay, Polaris, you will give them a first burst of missile fire. Polaris, open up fire. Who is in command? Commander Mario Booz of the 1st Detroit Command Squadron. 12 missiles are on the way. Cease fire for now. I want to see effect. Here they come. Good nuclear detonations. We did not take any damage on... We had a 10% chance to hit. Four STOs were destroyed. And we took no return fire, it seems. Okay. Based on that then, uh, Polaris, open fire all missiles. You are free to keep fire pouring in. Good hits. Six STOs down, and all STOs have been destroyed. Good job. First cruiser division, we are going to have you hold the line in system. And I then want to order back the Vulcaria once we have the Vulcaria repaired. Now, Vulcaria is currently a little bit off the way, so we're going to wait for... Um, I'm actually going to send the Azerus through. Uh, I want that planet geologically surveyed as soon as possible. Okay, oh god, okay, that did not win, but I thought we were completely clear, we are not completely clear, we are not completely clear at all, the manticore just went down, because I just timed, oh god, okay, <laughs> they got a surprise thing on us, um, open fire, open fire, open fire, I want all lasers firing now, on uh, targets, ground forces, why can we not detect that, active sensors on please, Actives on, active on, active on. Okay, we there's still 800 tons of them left. Are you kidding me? Fire all weapons on the surface to orbit. Sign fleet, open fire fleet. That's not good enough. What's the hit chance on that? 2.4%. Okay, fire missiles. God damn it. Pull it back, pull it back, pull it back. Move towards the jump point. We just took an absolute beating because of some very poor tactical decisions. <laughs> Sidewinder, give me a report on your current status. Yeah, give me a report on damage, ship combat. Ship overview, armor status, damage control. Uh, crew quarters damaged, casualty figures, nothing. Okay. Missiles fire, continue fire on enemy surface orbit weapon systems. Okay, missiles away. Okay, that killed four of them. Get closer, please. We've already lost four ships. And we lost to Polaris. Oh. Like they beat Polaris. <laughs> I promise I have lots of arrows in this game. <laughs> okay, we need a replacement immediately. Um, which we don't have the ability to make. That one. We need a replacement immediately. Uh, and that means we need new shipyards. Okay, well, let's not lose that other vessel if we possibly can. I want the Polaris back here now, so I'm going to send the Roadrunner to Sirius. And then I want... Yeah, the Polaris. Okay, that's fine. We need to build a replacement set of destroyers. I'm going to build three more destroyers. Two more destroyers to replace, and then a new Manticore class vessel, the Pollock. Okay, did we kill them yet? We did. Okay. Uh, orders. You need to rescue those those crew members immediately. We still have 300 people in, in life pods there. Uh, rescue. This is a black day. The 31st of March, 2048. Day is 31st of March. 
Okay, rescue those survivors. Get them back as soon as we can here. Yeah, get them back as soon as we can. And, um... Then go to the... Then hold your position. Just hold that position for now. We're gonna get a server vessel over. Hopefully, we uh, people have not died in vain. Head to the jump point. And I'm gonna send over the Lysimera to Sirius as well. That is a really crap occurrence that that happened. And yeah, we need to get them home ideally as quick as possible. What is radiation levels looking like? Unrest is rising due to radiation levels. Yeah, I can see that. Um, so on the Poochie, radiation... Okay, we've dropped the temperature. So turns out, throwing nuclear missiles at a planet cools the planet down. However, we have now... We've called a minus 5.1 degree change, but radiation has is now somewhat affecting the planet, which means that political stability is down and also causing some other negatives. But the planet's now hospitable. I mean, you know, that's, that's something, right? <laughs> okay, well, we're going to geologically survey the world at least. And we've discovered a new jump point in Sirius, which is... The Stratos is the new jump point. Um, so we are going to go through that jump point in the Sirius system um, and see what we can find. Ooh, okay. What did we find? Ruined outpost and a lot of resources. A lot of resources. Okay. That needs to be priority then. We also have that destroyed outpost. We've got a ruined outpost here. Um, okay, the radiation is dissipating at least. It will get back to normal. But I think that's where we'll leave the episode. If you have enjoyed and are liking your editing style, it's going to be choppier, not choppier, but quicker and less time in the actual episode itself, but more important things that are happening. I hope you guys have enjoyed. I'll see you guys next time and uh, what a start to the series.